Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, a unique YouTube series focused on the fundamentals of fast tracking your career in cybersecurity. Whether you're an aspiring SOC analyst or pen tester, stay tuned for this exclusive tutorial style content from security professionals throughout the industry with tips and resources to get you on your way. So by the end of this episode, we're gonna uncover what a cybersecurity analyst does, how to gain practical skills and expertise, as well as how to kind of go with these punches as the field's evolving and, and meeting these new challenges we have to overcome. Pivoting into the field itself or just trying to strengthen your cybersecurity expertise, this guide is gonna cover everything you need for all the foundations to survive in this field. Let's begin by defining what exactly a cybersecurity analyst is. At its core, the role involves protecting IT systems and networks from unauthorized access, theft, or damage. In a cybersecurity analyst position, you're not just a protector of information, you are essentially the front lines of digital warfare, actively safeguarding digital assets from increasingly sophisticated cyber threats. So while the average day may differ for a security analyst, we can typically expect to see things like monitoring, analyzing network traffic, uh, keeping an eye out for things like security breach or vendor compromise and also these these typical you know prevent detect of future attacks as time goes by working in a sock my expectation or mantra has always been walking into the room expecting something to be on fire <laughs> it's, it's this this constant bombardment of something that's being affected in the wild and hoping it doesn't affect your environment all we can do is make sure our detections are up to date and our perimeter is nice and strong so that way if someone's coming to pound on our stuff we are ready and willing to take on any sort of challenge that's at play Transitioning into a cybersecurity role typically involves having an interest in things like technology or just the, the, how things work. Uh, take my path for instance, when I was growing up in, in the 90s, I grew up around my dad and his friends who were very tech savvy. Uh, I used to fix the old CRT uh, tube televisions, uh, anything from like a blown capacitor or a resistor, what have you, uh, to VCRs. And this, this fascination for fixing things and kind of getting an understanding of how they work got me into the world eventually of Xbox modding. Now, uh, Microsoft had a beautiful product back in the day, but you could also go through and with using known exploits in the wild, you could actually sideload things like Linux, uh, you know, doing different third-party applications. Uh, it wasn't all just software. A lot of it was hardware modifications, like putting new hard drives or uh, LEDs for like aesthetic looks. Uh, but this eventually took me down a path of aircraft maintenance. <laughs> so this hardware, you know, manipulation, you know, how things work on, on a circuit board level eventually pulled me into that field. I eventually pivoted from there into a IT technician for a large electricity company. And then fast forward to today, I'm actually an incident responder for a 24 seven SOC. Now, all of these things I like to think added up to a well-rounded troubleshooter, this individual who's just really, you know, interested in technology. But my particular path took me about 10 years, uh, short of a decade uh, uh, to get me into the place where I am today. So uh, while your miles may vary, uh, my path was way less structured. Um, we're now gonna dig into some of these practical skills and traits that kind of fast track your path a little bit. Success as a cybersecurity analyst not only depends on your technical acumen, but also like a variety of other skills to kind of square you away. So let's talk about some of these key competencies that'll set you apart in the field. Starting off this list, we're gonna get into the IT fundamentals, kind of a robust understanding of how computers work, fundamentally speaking, networks and security protocols. We wanna have a nice foundation to build our things on top of and just knowing things uh, on, on a very basic level allows us to build up. Staying ahead Head means keeping your ear to the ground, listening to things like podcasts or just those cybersecurity news, um, blog articles, what have you, taking whatever's out there in the wild and adapting it to your environment and understanding those risks. Now, speaking of risk, every decision is based off of a risk to benefit scale. Uh, we would love to implement as many security protocols, you know, mitigation tools, what have you, but if that slows down productivity and the money making factors of an IT, you know, environment or a business, uh, <laughs> upper management's not gonna be too stoked. So we need to kind of weigh those pros and cons, make sure we're not allowing them to walk over security. But at the same time, we need to be making money as a whole and, and doing that in a cohesive way is extremely important. Now, while we can put as many mitigation tools in play, if a security breach does occur, acting swiftly and effectively is extremely crucial. Having all of the abilities of finding the source of the issue 
causing a containment of said issue and then remediating as effectively as possible is one of the most important parts of incident response and the effective you know purpose of security uh, when it comes to security analysts. Debatably the most important skill on this list is actually a soft skill. Analytical thinking is being able to go through vast amounts of data and sift through these patterns and, and detect true threats. We're gonna have multiple false positives as we go, but finding those genuine events is a lot harder than you would think. You know, in, in practice, it's, it's a good muscle you have to work, but it is debatably the most important skill to have as a security analyst. Automation is a key skill to have when it comes to working with these large sets of data. Uh, being proficient in things like PowerShell or Python allows you to take a large amount of data and on the fly for a specific use case, whip up a very simple solution that allows you to work through your flow just a little bit easier. Taking a stack of IOCs or, or what have you and just making it a little bit easier to parse through is just such a valuable skill to have and it makes you stand out amongst your peers in a very quick way. Effective communication is crucial when working in this space. Being able to convey these technical concerns to stakeholders who may not have that same technical background. If you're unable to articulate the situation at hand, you may not be able to get the funding or the resources that are needed or available. Um, not being able to, to you know, discern uh, a, a normal issue from say like a critical event could be a, a huge hindrance and an issue if you're not able to convey that properly. So these, these soft skills start to add up as time goes, but effective communication is again, one of those really important ones you need to learn. Cybersecurity often involves having a meticulous approach on things, being very detail oriented and attention to detail like no other, sifting through data and seeing very small changes or these little things that are hard to stand out. Uh, having an eye for that kind of a thing will be extremely helpful and again, help you with your analysis. Cybersecurity isn't a solo sport. It really does take a tribe to work through these types of issues. You start getting into the more details, you know, you can do the analysis on your own, but if you were missing logs, you might have to reach out to an asset owner. You are trying to get a asset itself. You may have to reach out to like a help desk or like a desktop support style team to grab things for like forensic analysis. If you wanted to say implementing new rules uh, or detection mechanisms, you may have different teams that do that kind of a thing, like an engineering party. So when, when it comes to being a security analyst, you can do a lot on your own, depending on your environment, if you have those privileges, but typically you're not gonna be like a, a one man army. It, it does take a, a team to make these things happen. If you haven't learned by now, cybersecurity is one of those careers where it's ever evolving. You know, one day the adversary is attacking this way and then the next day they find something new and it's just constantly making our lives, you know, uh, uh, an enjoyable experience. <laughs> so it's, it's just constantly keeping your ear to the ground, whether it's through podcasts, blogs, YouTube channels, um, uh, official trainings, what have you. It's just constantly keeping yourself sharp between the ears so you know how to stay ahead of of this kind of activity as opposed to being reactive and then dealing with bigger problems. Mastering the skills of a cybersecurity analyst isn't just about theory of operation. You have to actually take the information that you're learning and put it into action. So we're gonna talk about some of these practical skills and ways to gain some of that experience to prepare you for this role. My initial recommendation is to engage into these simulation platforms, whether it's things like Over the Wire or, or Hack the Box. It allows you to kind of hone these skills and kind of like sharpen your teeth in a controlled space, an environment where you really can't mess things up. You don't wanna do these things in prod. <laughs> but um, it allows you to kind of, you know, focus on things like command line or just the fundamentals of like how penetration testing works, how a hacker thinks. You know, this allows us to defend better because we know how our adversary would do things. So not necessarily as comparable to the real thing. Capture the flag events are just a lot of fun. It's a way you get to apply the skills that you've been learning in a semi sandboxed environment. You get to see how people would navigate through an issue in a very gamified way of learning. Uh, I love them, I do them all the time, and I really can't recommend them enough. Uh, just know that they're not necessarily the most realistic in scenarios. So while a little bit harder to get into, contributing to open source security events uh, and projects is a really neat way of gaining this practical experience. You know, be able to contribute to a project and having your name on something is just a really great resume bullet, but also having your hand in the software vulnerability space is just extremely important 
whatever walk of life in cybersecurity you are. This one has to be the most commonly recommended when you're kind of getting into the field, which is these at-home projects, building your own security projects. So whether it's you fortifying and securing your home network or putting you know devices or your own application with security features, this is going to be the way you show future employers that you're almost looking at it as more of like an enthusiast. You're, you 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 want to get a job, obviously, but you you are kind of more passionate about this stuff. So if you're you're doing your own stuff on your own time, it just shows a little bit more effort than if you weren't. Whether it's the big ones like DEF CON or Black Hat, just to local vendors, training sessions, um, attending these workshops or conferences are extremely important for networking and also getting your ear to the ground for what's going on in the wild and what's up to date in the security world. I myself belong to numerous chapters and I've attended a, a bunch of different conferences like B-Sides or Black Hat. It is really cool to see folks talk about the event before it's released into the wild. And it's a really uh, thoughtful way of learning when it comes to how to keep yourself up to date for detections and, and staying ahead of these attacks in a cybersecurity analyst role. While gaining practical skills, it's also important to consider certifications. Now, this will be the most debated of all the practical skills because there's a lot of folks out there who have gotten great jobs without certifications, but certifications will offer you a structured path of learning while also becoming a little bit more valuable to employers. Um, some environments, you have to actually hold certain certifications to get the job. So look for the job that you're trying to get, see if the certification is applicable to that. But I mean, some of these certifications are really neat. The, the Hack the Box CDSA cert is a very hands-on practical certification that prepares you for security analyst roles, but then it also allows you to, at the end, have that little piece of paper to, to show to employers. So as we're landing this plane, I'm gonna focus on separating this last part into two separate paths. Folks that have a little bit of IT background and then folks that are new to this space altogether. We're gonna take some actionable items and see how we can get into this career path in 2024. Starting with my folks that have a little bit of IT experience, we're gonna focus on the system administrative, you know, the network engineering, the help desk stuff, all the complexities of the, the job that we had in the past and use those as leverage of, hey, we have a head start. We don't have to worry about learning the fundamentals. I've been doing this for so long, right? Then we're gonna specialize our, our specific skills and kind of orient them a little bit more into the security space. So while I worked in system administrative you know, activities, I also had a hand in the policy making and we deployed these GPOs, making sure that they had a emphasis on security. Or when we were working in networking, we had a hand in these ACLs. I'm just kind of creating a more of a, a bias towards security. So that way an employer is looking at this, they can say, yeah, well, these skills are very transferable and you know, this is a good fit for this individual. And then lastly, we're gonna marry the skills with the uh, credentials. So any sort of you know formal training that we can get that kind of postures us into more of a security direction, as well as any sort of certifications. We just want like a more holistic view. Yes, this person you know administrated you know IT, but now we can secure it. And that's, that's kind of the angle we're gonna be going for. As for my folks that don't have as much IT experience, we're gonna essentially take the same set of rules and almost like flip it backwards. So in my opinion, going into these interviews or these you know job applications with some sort of accreditation, whether it's you know certifications or formal training, we want to put that up front and show that hey, we are actively trying to get into this space and taking the time and resources to invest into ourselves. We are then going to kind of focus on the the home projects. Hey, I, I do the these uh, sandbox or these controlled environment trainings. And then I'm also doing things in my labs. I'm doing things at my home network. I'm, I am fortifying an enthusiast, right? Where we're showing, hey, I'm really excited to get into this space. I just need a shot, a chance, if you will. And then to kind of, you know, full, that, that whole concept, we want to show the transferable skills that we mentioned a couple chapters back where, hey, I you know don't have the, the previous professional experience. However, I have great communication skills. I have an attention to detail. You know, a lot of things can be conveyed in conversation. And I think the hardest part is getting that initial interview. But once you get your foot in the door, I think that's going to be the piece that carries you over. Uh, I, as you remember, I didn't start out in IT. I was in aircraft maintenance, but 
having that networking, going to the, the formal trainings, the meetup groups, putting yourself out there and then say, hey, this guy is, is actually really enjoyable to be around or hey, this person can really convey you know, complex topics to something that's a little bit more palatable, it goes a, a, a long way. And, and I really can't emphasize that enough that it, you can really even the playing field by just simply having good, hard or soft skills in this field. I want you to remember that the journey is both challenging yet rewarding. It, this is a very much a input output kind of a scenario where we take these expertise, you know, the, the skills that we've learned, the practical abilities, the, the ever changing space in itself. Everything that we take here, none of it matters unless you actually apply it and use it in the real world. We're gonna take this, these things that we've learned and we're gonna carve it into whether it's an internship, a entry level position, or, or something that's not even security to begin with. It could be any IT job, but if it allows you to pivot, then it's worth its weight in gold. This this career field is constantly evolving. You don't know what it's going to be tomorrow, and it's best just to take what you have and implement it right away. Now, if you want to take your hacking adventure to the next level, then you may enjoy this video right here, where we discuss how to learn hacking in 2024. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.